What is up, brothers and sisters? It's Jay Campbell, and you're listening to the Jay Campbell Podcast. Join me for regular deep dives with amazing beings whose work is manifesting a golden age. And remember, you create your reality by your focused thoughts, conscious words, and intentional actions. Raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. Hey guys, what's up? It's Jay Campbell, and I'm making a quick commercial here for SeerCustom.com, my revolutionary cosmeceutical peptides company, co-founded with my business partner, Nick Andrews, who happens to be one of the world's top formulators. We have the revolutionary Oxano Grow, which completely regrew my hair. If you guys saw my hair about a year ago, I was almost bald. I even had the micropigmentation program from uh, Advantis. And now I've completely regrown my hair. That's just with version one. Version two is now in the marketplace or will be very, very soon. And it is three to five times as more effective than the current version or the original beta version of Oxana. We also have Royal Blue Serum and Sky Blue Cream, which will completely upgrade your face. I mean, I'm almost 50 years old. I have a pretty good complexion. I use it regularly. My wife swears by it. It will reduce fine lines and wrinkles, dramatically improve elasticity, and just the overall look and feel of your face. You feel great on both of them. You can also use them with red light therapy. There's all sorts of great stuff. So go to a seercustom.com. And if you're a first time customer, use the coupon J15 to take 15% off your purchase. I appreciate all you guys. And I send you tremendous love and light. Well, hello everybody. What is going on? I am Jay Campbell and you are watching uh, the Jay Campbell podcast. And it's actually part two with my amazing friend, Danny Vega. Danny, how are you, brother? Good, man. Good to be back. It is awesome to be back. So we're going to run this podcast in back-to-back weeks because the first week, part one, if you haven't seen it, you need to go back and watch it. Danny and I went really deep on spirituality, the nature of reality, what's going on in the current day and time. And we thought we would come back and do part two, which is really going to specialize in the things that made me and Danny known (laughs) in the world, right? Like we're internet famous, if you want to call us that, right? For the things that we've done, the books that we've done, the speeches that we've given, the presentations that we've made, all the stuff that, you know, has put us in this position of influence, so to speak, from, you know, a fitness, a fat loss, a lifestyle, biohacking, all this stuff, right? So um, first man, it's an honor to have you again here, bro. Like I know it's just a week later, both of us are so busy in our lives today. Um, what would you say right now before we get deep? Cause this is going to be for our best friends and our, you know, our real close inner circle people who follow us. But like, what would you say to somebody right now? Who's not in the best of health. They're in the time of COVID, you know, what can they do as a casual, not a hardcore Jay Campbell, Danny Vega fan or audience member, but as a casual observer, what can they do right now to improve their health and make themselves relatively immune to COVID? Dude, there's, there's right off the top of my head, like there's gotta be some stress management practices in place. Um, because we, we see what cortisol does to the immune system. We see the correlation between, you know, high levels of anxiety and bad outcomes with the supposed, you know, bug. And so like, there's, there's something to be said about that. Like whether there's anything going around or not, which there's always something going around. It's like, people don't understand. There's always something going around. People need to to learn how to be resilient. You know, they, they need to focus more on, I would say, find a breathing practice that's simple to start with, you know, like box breathing is a real simple one. Beautiful. Five second inhale, five second hold, five second exhale, five second hold. Um, doing that throughout the day, um, checking in with yourself throughout the day. Walking is something that people should be doing. You know, I, I would say anybody, even who works 50, 60 hours a week could make time for a 15, 20 minute walk in the morning to, to set those circadian rhythms, you know, as close to sunrise as possible and another 15 20 minute walk after dinner simple little Beautiful. things you can do other than that man people have to um take this whole metabolic derangement much more seriously um you know it's it's looking more and more now that everybody should at least be low carb and i don't want to say everybody but i mean then we have what 88 percent of people that study that came out in january of 2020 that talked about 88 percent of people in this country have some form of metabolic derangement. So, you know, that's, that's a lot, man. And I, and I think it was like, 
Dude, I think 50% of kids, um, and this is in the next couple of years, are going to be obese, like morbidly obese. They're already obese in California. I mean, Oof. I mean, I mean, I mean, Florida and California is where you and I live and spend most of our time. And these are the two states that traditionally have the most sunlight, the best climate. So people are, you know, typically or traditionally out and about. Yeah. And as you know, dude, you know whatever, you know, the suburbs you're in, the suburbs I'm in. I mean, these kids are fat, dude. I mean, most yeah. people today, they don't even have PE in the schools. I mean, you know, we could get into the whole COVID debacle where nobody goes to school and they're all at home <laughs> yeah. sitting on their Zoom calls. Yep. I mean, the whole thing is a disaster. But to what you just said, you know, I will echo and then I want to get surgical here is that yeah. people definitely have to what we call, you know, control for insulin. Oh, yeah. You know, you have to lead, lead an insulin controlled lifestyle. And, you know, you said it best. I mean, that has to encompass reducing your carbohydrate consumption. It literally is that simple. Like, as you know, the majority of carbohydrates that people consume are boxed foodstuffs. Yep. They're literally poisons coming from, you know, big agra that manufactures all of this gigantic, like, you know, industrialized feed I mean, imagine like giving industrialized food to cows and that's what they're doing to humans. There's no difference. Yeah, that's what's in these boxes, bro. GMO, artificial seeds, all of these things. The human body cannot even digest these things. This is not even debatable at this point. Again, Dr. Yeah. Anthony J. There's other thousands of other people and researchers who have studied this. The byproducts of these artificial seeds and foodstuffs are literally causing toxic systemic, you know, damage to biological systems. Yeah. So it's like reduce carbohydrates. Number one, start eating if you can. And again, a lot of people can't afford it, but organic wild caught meats. I mean, it's, it's, it's really, really simple if we can really simplify it, but that's the problem, bro. Like, you know, people are, well, people, they're only like, okay. It's like Walmart sprouts, you know, right. all, all these big stores that's what they're programmed to do. And they don't understand that if they just call their rancher or their farmer, the, the, they don't even need to worry about the organic thing. Like if people could understand that it's so simple to just have a conversation with a human being, with a, with a living human on the other side of the phone. And when, when I tell my rancher, are you guys organic? And he's like, well, what are you looking for when you mean organic? Mm. Because really it's, I don't care about the label as long as what I want is being done. You know, and that's something that a lot of farmers, they won't pay for the for the organic. And yes, you have to take them at their words. So there needs to be an, a relationship there. But he's not doing, you know, mass uh, antibiotics. He's not doing um, any type of feed or, or he's grass finished. You know, he's not adding anything, any fertilizer, any, you know, glyphosate. And that's really all that matters. But people are so stuck in that paradigm of yeah. like, it's so simple to go to the store exactly. and just get exactly. your plastic, you know? Right. Um, and it, it's, uh, that's, that's a big deal, man. And people need to understand too, that like the, these lifestyles that we live, it's so simple, the things that you can do, and it's not as convenient. Like don't eat your food in the car as you're driving somewhere. Right. Don't right. be walking around eating, like sit down, eat, you know, <laughs> eat it. Eat a freaking meal, you know? Do your food, demandables, get them going. I know, dude, it's, yeah. it's absolutely true. I mean, you know, there's the whole thermogenic thermogenic effect of chewing your food, meat, right? Yeah. Like, I mean, yeah. it's all there, but you're right. We, 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 we've been sped up. We've been mass produced. We've been instant gratification. I mean, everybody has to do everything on a time. Everybody's looking at each other's calendar. You know, like I just got off a call, as I was telling you before we got on the show, <laughs> and it wasn't really a good call, but it was like, all I could think about was like, well, you know what? The best news is, is I'm going to be doing a podcast with Danny when I get off this debacle. Heck yeah. And so I'm even looking at the time, you know, like hurry, hurry, hurry. And that's kind of the world that we've now got ourselves into. Nobody is balanced. Nobody is rhythmic from a standpoint of like, Hey, I'm just going to let the light, I'm going to let my life happen. Yeah. Everybody is just kind of like, go, 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 go speed, speed, speed and, speed, and speed. getting blown around with the winds. Cause I, listen, I'll be I'm the first one to say I've done it, but like if people are living with purpose, I mean that exactly, that should be a thing, you know, because if you're living with purpose, number one, 
these things become like background noise that that you can just be like, okay, that's that's not right. really relevant right now. I got I got this goal that I got to do. I got this daily process that I got to go through. Right. So, um, yeah, I mean, the, the carbs got to be lowered and even simple things, you know, because the way my buddy Drew puts it, I love it. It's like, you know, you're not going to if you are at the point where you want to you want to sculpt this beautiful wooden sculpture out of this tree, right? You know, you're not going to go directly to the little, you know, ham hammer and um, chisel. Right. You're going to you're going to start with the freaking chainsaw. So those big bucket items like don't eat, you know, like have some some we have some hard um, no's in, the, in this house. We don't do, um, you know, what do you call it? Food coloring. So so any type of food coloring, we don't do um, wheat, we don't do processed sugars and we don't do seed oils. Nice. And like when you look at the majority of the food, not only does it That's have all, all it of that, yeah, and, and look at what they use in, in studies to fatten up the rats. It's the exact right. same macronutrient exactly. ratios. It's like 12% protein, you know, whatever 40 to 50% carbs, and the other, the rest of it is fat. It's an inflammatory soup that people are consuming, and they're adding that to their nonstop porn and TV consumption, their nonstop um video games. Else? Yeah, video, video games. games, you know, just stimulated beyond belief, not really, you know, taking time. And we have to do that. I mean, I, I, I hope people understand that at, at some point you got to just say, stop and let me start doing, you know, living life on my own terms, not being taken with the wind and not look at your daily process. I mean, there's something to be said about having a daily routine at right. the same time, if your daily routine involves you know, running on the hamster wheel, going to your box, doing your exercise there, coming home, eating, sitting down in front of the TV all day. That's got to change, dude. I mean, it's you're, you're stuck. I mean, dude, it's stuck. crazy what you just said, but like I have these calls with young people, you know, I would say from 22 to 30, you know, all the time now, because that's kind of most of the workforce right now, and like the you know infrastructural, technological, app world, and all of these people you can tell play video games. The yeah. way they talk, you know, the way they sit in front of their monitors. I mean, it's you know none of them are in shape. And again, I'm not lab labeling or judging or condition, you know, or, or, or critiquing them, but it's very clear that society, especially since COVID, but really since technology really took over, which was probably what six to eight years ago. We've become sedentary. The majority of people oh, man. literally do nothing. Like you said, even the people that quote unquote do train, they're not living the lifestyle. They, like you said, they go to the gym and then they come back and they plop down and work in front of their computer all day. And sedentary athlete there. syndrome. Yeah. Sedentary athlete. I mean, movement has to be, you know, we burn, this is crazy, Jay. I don't know if you know this. We burn the same amount of calories as like our ancestors, like 10,000 years ago which most people would be like, how is that even happening? Well, it's because the amount of energy that our brains are consuming, you know, exactly. bringing in all this info. Yep. So we're yep. not getting the benefits. So they got the calorie burn, but it was involved in, you know, foraging, you know, hunting, yeah. walking around all day. Sunlight. We're not doing that. Yeah. Our, we're just no. consuming information and our brains are just, so we're not getting the benefits of that quote unquote calorie burn that we get from that. The, 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 so, so we'll jump into the, because it's a perfect segue, but Yesterday I was on the phone, uh, of course, a Zoom call with my course creator lady, and she's amazing. And she's like, dude, I hate to tell you this, but I literally have an optic nerve migraine right now. It just oh. started like three minutes before I got on the call. And so I start helping her and talk to her like what she can do. And I'm like, you do realize that that's an occupational hazard. You know, you're on calls all day. She does wear blue light glasses, but, you know, you're staring at this tech. And the reason I brought that up before we get into this is that, as you know, dude, like, this is also part and parcel of being proactive. Yeah. This shit is toxic. Mm -hmm. These LED blue light, white incandescent technology light is filtering in through our skin cells, through our optic nerve, through everything. And if you're not doing things to protect yourself, I mean, dude, you're getting killed. At all yeah, Insane. melatonin, you know, co consistent suppression of melatonin at all times. You got to take something to go to sleep. It's just like someone posted, uh, I think it, it might have been Anthony or it might have been Dr. Sam Madero. One of these, one of our friends like posted something and I was like, the amount of kids right now, the amount of people on on amphetamines is. Dude, oh, yeah, I saw it. It was Sam. It was Sam. 
Sam, it was, dude. Uh, seven days a week. It's seven days a week. Oh, no. Seven pills a week minimum, 30% of society. 30%, dude. And that's just, we've convinced people that it's okay to get hooked on amphetamines. Jesus Christ, dude. I mean, Adderall, as you know, is an absolute gnarly drug. I mean, it <laughs> Don't get me close to it, dude. I'll, I'll take all of it. Bro, it literally <laughs> rewires the dopaminergic signaling pathways. I mean, you're, you know, you get hooked on that. Like you said, it's literally a very, very fine, you know, aspect of meth. I mean, it's, yeah. it's that close to being meth, you know? So it's like, you're right. It, I mean, we have so many people addicted to drugs, pain medications, you know, stimulants, uh, focus agents. I mean, everybody is looking for a fix in, yep. in some way or the other, you know, and then, you know, and this goes into what we're about to talk about, but like, then, you know, the average guy, he has a testosterone deficiency. He goes to the doctor and the doctor doesn't even check his blood panels. The doctor just writes him a script for an SSRI, a Wellbutrin, whatever. Oof. And then an, a, an erectile defunct. Some ED. Yeah. Some ED with your, just, with just your... so they can make money. <laughs> And, you know, again, now the root cause, which is a testosterone deficiency, a hormonal imbalance is causing everything that he's dealing with. But now he's just getting his symptoms addressed, yep. which ultimately will lead to a worse and worse cascade. So, I mean, again, we just perfectly set the environment for what is wrong. Now, we're going to tell you guys I love it. how to get over this. So the first topic we have is... Um, Bleeding edge on fasting and remaining metabolically flexible. Now, I'm just going to say, and Danny's going to go long-winded. I'm just going to say that whether you do a fasting protocol, a low-carb protocol, a carnivore, a ketotic, uh, even a one meal a day, everything comes down to remaining metabolically flexible. And you will remain metabolically flexible as long as you somehow incorporate it you know, the biochemical cascades of autophagy and hormesis. Now I'm going to let you talk about that, but in truth, as long as your body is allowed to regenerate itself cellularly through these, you know, again, bouts of feeding and not feeding, you're going to be okay. Now go ahead, Danny. <clears throat> okay. So, um, the first thing I'll say is that like what you said is, is we're talking about fasting and metabolic flexibility. Why are we mentioning both? Because bringing it back to the first point, it's going to make you more resilient. And yeah. um, we had Seem Land on the podcast, or maybe I was on his podcast. And he said something, dude, that I was just like, that is that is the quintessence right there. The beauty lies in the variation. Yeah. It's not about intermittent fasting every single day. It's right. not about eating the same way every day. It's about these, these different um, interactions between anabolism and catabolism and and hormetic stressors and and bringing them in at the right time understanding like when to do it um so the first thing i'll say is like as far as metabolic flexibility goes i did literally like three years of research and it was usually in the summer you know i, I would i would play with different pre-workouts i would try tkd you know i would try ckd i would do carb ups i would do all this stuff i'm at a place now where i think um you know, it would be good for anyone who follows a low carb or a ketogenic diet to, to do it this way is intuitive carb ups. Yeah. And, you know, those intuitive carb ups, like in contrast with last year where I was like, you know, every single week in the summer I was I was doing a carb up. I did it for 12 weeks in a row. Um, these intuitive ones are like we understand that there's times in the year where maybe we got it going. We got the energy going. We got the time. So we're training harder. I was hadn't done any carb ups until May. And at the time I was in the middle of doing 75 hard. I had to do two 45 minute workouts a day. Um, and I was burnt out one morning as I, I was, I was shaking more. Like I could tell I was working out with my buddy Zach and I could tell that, you know, I was low on electrolytes. I was, you know, just my fuel tank was low. Boom. You know, carb up right there. That's the best way to do it. Um, as far as, you know, like maintenance stuff, I'll say this, something that I've been doing and being better about doing is, is the quarterly three day fast. But the, the, the only thing that I will say that has really just changed the game for me has been to really take that time to stop worrying about, does this break my fast? Does that break my fast? What am I going to do with what's my protocol and work on the spiritual side, dude? Like when we, Maura and I did that last two fasts have been a freaking joke. 
Right. You know, because when you have your mind set on something else and you're not just worrying about, right. Did I break trend? my fast? Oh my gosh. Yeah. And you're, you're, you're imagine how freaking your stress hormones with that right. one, Ridiculous. you know? So, um, having that, uh, you know, having that focus and, and going inside and doing some reading and doing some pondering and asking some questions that has been dude, such a game changer. Um, I'll, I'll say, so the quarterly three day fast is, is good. And then uh, I'll do my, my daily IF on my non-lifting um, or travel right. days. So right. that'll be like 18 to 20. I mean, right now I'm going on who knows how long. It's 154 here in Tampa and I haven't eaten today. Because um, right. I, I did, today I just did aerobic work. I ran seven exactly. miles. I did push-ups and, and squats. So, but, you know, one thing that I've noticed, dude, is I've, I've had a, a little bit more. I think it was because one of the clients that I picked up she told all her friends. So it was like, I started to get this sample of like perimenopausal and menopausal women. Nice. And I really started to see something dude that, that, that has been very helpful. So if there's anybody who's your mom or, or if you are going through that time of maybe you're starting to lose a cycle here and there or three, or you've gotten past that point where you're, you're completely menopausal, these either high levels of stress. So like these times of high levels of stress or hormonal changes, um, one meal. Uh, so what, what you could do, this is, this is what I've been using for some of these clients, dude. And it's been working freaking amazing. Nice. So I give them three meals a day. Cause I understand that I'm trying to, I'm trying to tackle this big stress bucket. That's completely full. And I'm trying to take things out in different areas. So like intermittent fasting is a stressor, you know, cold plunges are a stressor. Those could be hormetic and they can be, you know, for the good, if your stress bucket's not full, if your stress bucket's full, everything you do is too much. So you right. got to start taking things out. So what I did, dude, is I, I basically gave them three meals a day. So instead of like the two or worrying about longer fasting, I gave them those three meals a day. And a lot of them had to be like, that was a, a game changer for them because, you know, we're told certain things about how you do keto and how you intermittent fast, where it's like two meals a day or whatever. But I wanted to get that extra meal, number one, because I knew that even extra hunger could cause a, a cortisol, you know, could trigger cortisol. So starting them off the first two meals of the day, no carbs. So it's just like fiber. Um, and this also works, dude, for also for the, the hormonally, you know, estrogen dominant, you know, so younger women eating more um, fiber throughout the day is going to help soak up that extra estrogen. And then that dinner meal to really try to get those cortisol patterns back to where it's like high cortisol in the morning, low cortisol at night. Cause most people are walking around with that inverted cortisol. Inversion, yeah. yeah. So they got like morning, they're, they're groggy. And then at night they're tired and wired. So that dinner meal, giving them a starch dude, like giving them like a sweet potato, a yam. Right. Uh, um, and that really helped in combination with more low intensity aerobic work for these women. Um, for when it came to the lifting shorter, intense sessions, right. Right. Over time, dude, we saw because we were tracking like, you know, sleep, hunger, um, sleep, hunger, mood, um, energy, cravings, all those things that you could track them because right. it's like the way our, meta our, our metabolism speaks to us. So um, the other one that I that I noticed was for some of these women that had exhibiting, <clears throat> you know, either either a mixed um, hormonal issue or even like estrogen dominance is that second half of the of the cycle you know, cutting those carbs in half. So, you know, if you're having that starch for dinner, you know, just cut that serving in half and, and it worked really well. So that's pretty much dude, what, what I had for that. I mean, um, the, the thing with this is, you know, we can talk when we get to the muscle part, we can talk about how to use keto. Cause a lot of people come to someone like me and they're like, I want to do keto. And it's like, right, okay, right. I want to please the customer. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, you're my client, you're the, you're the boss. But, you know, if you're a guy who's your, your 150 pounds, you, you, you're a hard gainer, we got yeah, to <laughs> do some, I mean, like, it's like, how am I going to intermittent fast? I'm like, dude, you're doing seven <laughs> catabolic things right now. How are we going to add any muscle on you? You know, we got to, we got to, uh, uh, you know, kind of adjust for that. So let me, let, so you just said a lot. So let me, let me, let me, let me add, and then we'll go into the next state, the next bullet point, because it's going to be really deep, especially coming from you and me. So. You said something that's very important that a lot of people fuck up and you know, you already do this 
and I don't even know if you ever even read my books, but you're just oh, heck yeah, I read two. You're, of them, yeah. you're intuitive on this anyway, so I mean it doesn't matter. I mean you already know. I mean look at you, but 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 the reality is is most people will tell you that they're fasting or do, you know remaining quote unquote metabolically flexible, but training with weights under glycogen oh depletion. Oh yeah, terrible, and, and a lot of terrible. them are doing, and they're also doing your typical high carb you know, yeah. lifting, which is like, you know, drop sets, a little Dude, bit of rest. It's so insane. Yeah. Literally. Yeah. So, so let's, let's just stay there for one second. So if you're a guy yeah. and and mostly it's dudes that are doing this, but some women do this, but again, women, you guys aren't going to develop the muscle power, the firepower to truly, you know, traumatize or catastrophically blow out a joint. But if you're a person who is muscular, you know, you're over 200 pounds, you're, 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 you're a functionally strong lifter, squatter, overhead presser, bench presser, dumbbell presser, whatever. And you are fasting 16 to 18 hours and then doing explosive lifts. If you're over the age of 40, you're going to end up seeing an orthopedic surgeon. Okay. There's no way around that. You know, I Especially know guys lean. At, dude, guys come at you. They come at me and they're like, yeah, but so-and-so's a pro and he's on a keto diet. That doesn't have anything to do with what we're talking about because a lot of those people are on massive amounts of drugs and other recovery agents that, you know, equalize the battlefield. We're talking And a lot about of them didn't use keto to get their size too. Of course. Right? I'm, I'm, look, I'm the keto guy. I'm the keto <laughs> guy, dude. Like, you know, what, what are you guys going to tell me? Like, I'm the, I love keto. I'm Mr. I got a keto flag on me at all times, dude. <laughs> But I mean, you're not going to be 300 pounds or right. even 250 pounds. I, dude, it's crazy what the internet has done. But back to what you're saying, I like that you say that. And again, this is important that if mm -hmm. you're going to fast or do keto or low carb or whatever, you have to be your energy demand relative to your exercise has to be functional of the energy that you're walking around in. Right. So if you're fasting, you said it, you should be doing cardio it cannot be intense. It cannot tap, you know, muscle aminos because then you're out, out of your fasted, you know, pathway anyway, because now your body has just released insulin because you're, you're training at too high of an intensity. So yep. a lot of people have to understand that if you're fasting, you're ketoing, you're omading, whatever it is you're doing, you're obviously carnivoring. You have to be very, very careful with the type of cardio you do when you're under again, a, 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 a feeding window or a non-feeding window, because that's how you will tech, you know, break the energy stores to a standpoint where you break your fast and you potentially put yourself into a catastrophic injury, especially if you're explosively training, like you said, like you're training like with high carb energy or high muscle glycogen energy. The only other thing I would add before we go into the next one is um, I like training with weights when I'm fed, okay? Mm -hmm. So if that means like what you were saying, like, you know, let's say you're doing a carnivore diet, you're doing a keto diet, or you're even doing like a, what you were doing last summer with the targeted keto. And I, by the way, I did that for three years where mm -hmm. you go five days of low carbs, pretty much trace ketosis. And then all of a sudden you have a carb up window for 24 to 36 hours. You eat clean, you know, you're not eating pizzas and fucking Mountain Dew. Yeah. And, and cereal know, you're, you're, and all you're, that you're, you're, you're basically glycogen loading for, mm -hmm. for, for lack of a better term. Whatever you do, if that's how you're doing it, you should train with weights explosively when you have the most muscle glycogen. And again, for aging people, guys like Danny, my age and Danny's age, you know, into the forties now later, it's critically important to do that. Because if again, if you're training fasted and, and, and again, by the way, this does not apply to you 125 pound guys who can't explosively lift. Okay. You're not going to injure yourself, but if you're a big guy or a big woman, and you're training intensely with literally no glycogen, you're asking to hurt yourself. And you don't want to do that as you age, as you know that, Danny. I mean, literally when you're in your 40s and 50s and you get hurt, you can't fucking train for six to eight months. It's so freaking, what an inconvenience. You're out. Yeah. <laughs> so why would you want to be out? Mm -hmm. Because you're training like a boss when you have no muscle glycogen. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Jay Campbell. Quick commercial for the optimized tribe with US Navy SEAL Michael Jaco and I every Monday night at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. There is not a single group online where you will get the highest level intel that Michael and I can provide you from mastering intuition to fully optimizing your hormonal health 
to improving your fitness, to raising your vibration and increasing your consciousness. There isn't a single group online with two dudes like Michael and myself helping people become the best version of their self. It's literally $99 a month and you get a 90 minute call with me and Michael every single Monday night. Don't wait another second. Sign up now at the link, theoptimizedtribe.com. I appreciate you guys and I send you tremendous love and light. I think we really just covered it all. You know, again, you know, moderate to low intensity, low impact when you're in a fasted state or when you're in a ketotic state or in a low carb state. And when you're training explosively, especially from a resistance standpoint, make sure you have at least some glycogen in your muscle pathways so that you don't get injured. Yep. Right. Yep. I mean, it's that simple. Yeah. Okay, so, so on ketosis, carnivore, and OBAD, now you're the real expert here. Um, I want to just say, and you know this, but I did three years of ketosis. Okay. I was doing targeted ketogenic dieting. I was doing cyclical ketogenic dieting. I was literally like the stunt dummy for Lyle McDonald, who is crazy as hell. Um, <laughs> you know, and I would still consider him a friend of mine. I mean, he's probably not, I'm not his friend because I say that, but he's crazy. I mean, he admits he's crazy, but I mean, when, when we did this book back in the mid nineties, we did all the science, we researched all this. So I speak from a, a level of knowing, right, about ketosis. And you know this too, and anybody who's hardcore has done these knows that like you have to, I love how you say it, intuitively carb, you have to learn your body because if you don't, you will retard your insulin metabolism. And over time, yeah. retarding your insulin metabolism is something you don't want to do. Now, granted, again, you know, if you're Dom Agostino, and you have epilepsy or a form of cancer or something else, and you're literally trying to restrict all sugar and, you know, glycation, that's a different story. If you're just yeah. a bro trying to lose some body fat, you know, ketosis is something that you have to learn how to do. Like you said, intuitively, you have to know when your body needs muscle glycogen because you do not want to get to a point where your insulin metabolism is retarded. Okay. That's all I can say. It's all you. Yeah, well, and the other thing like we didn't mention, and I'll say it one more time because it's it's why Ben and I wrote, you know, Keto Muscle Intelligence is like, we have to <laughs> keep on coming back to this. It's crazy, you know, cortisol. We have to come back to stress. We have to understand the interaction between cortisol and insulin, for example. So living this low insulin lifestyle brings so many benefits, right? And like we just talked about how um, at the same time, you know, not having insulin as a as an anabolic signal um, kind of retards muscle growth. And in a way that maybe if you're just an everyday person, it doesn't matter. But if you're trying to really compete, you you when the thing is, we're getting, for example, I'm getting a little bit of an mTOR signal, I'm getting growth hormone, I'm getting things like that. And even just from the protein, the leucine, but at the same time, you cannot compare that to insulin and the massively bigger mTOR signal that you're getting with insulin. And right. like, even though we don't have studies that compare, you know, um, protein and carbs versus just protein, we only have like cell cultures. And yeah, carbs do nothing on their own. Protein do something, but carbs and protein kill it, you know, anabolically. Right. Um, right. So when you're, when you're training, one of the things that I notice, and there there are some people that have like high, slow twitch muscle fibers, right. naturally more endurance, they might be right. able to go through this. But for me, I'm very fast twitch. Yep. So we know like from the faster study, for example, that like once you get fat adapted, you get a massive increase in your um, the intensity that you can train at while using fat as energy, right? Exactly. Yes. Here's the the caveat though, like if you're doing it over and over and over, like you know, drop sets, little oh, bit of um, rest, you know, you, lots of volume, you're f eventually you're gonna get to a point where your fat will not be able to keep up and do that. Um, what is it when they call a uh, beta oxidation to turn that into sugar to use that, and oh, that's uh, glu gluconeogenesis. Yep. Yeah, gluconeogenesis. You're, you're you're not gonna be able to keep up, and so. In one training session, that might not be a big deal, but then you got to look at the other side of that, the cortisol response. Oh. So, you know, someone, here's the, here's the options in my opinion. The options are train in a way that, you know, you're, you're six to eight reps, heavy, two minute rest. And, and I love that way because 
it also trains you to, to really be able to switch from parasympathetic to sympathetic. Because right. right. you'll notice most right. people at first are like, oh my gosh, two minutes, two and a half minutes. Right. That's right. a lot of time. Right. Don't get on your damn phone. <laughs> Don't bring down. your phone into your training session. Yeah. If I'm if I'm listening to something, maybe, you know, but I got my headphones on. Just but put like it over in the corner of the room, though. So you can't. Yeah, do not look at it because you want to get completely parasympathetic, breathe, relax. And then when you go back into that set, go all in. That's one way of doing it. And that's the way that I most of the time do it because I will eat after, but it's right. most of the time, unless I'm in the mood for tacos, I'll do like the siete tortillas, the the uh, almond flour ones, dude. They're freaking awesome. <laughs> Um, I'm usually just going to do meat because like, you know, I get icon meals every week. I, I literally right. eat pounds of meat at a time and I love it. Now, the other way that you could do it is and also if you want to do some of that, you know, high volume stuff, drop sets, all that. Don't be afraid to eat some carbs post-workout because that right, insulin response immediately brings down cortisol, exactly. you know. So exactly. um, now as far as keto and carnivore, um, I have an idea like something. Let me see where I put it. I was thinking of, I thought I wrote it down. Oh, maybe I wrote it on the back here. Oh yeah. So here's something that like, that I was thinking keto for meatheads. And I would just, this is just off the top of my head, but you know, for anybody who wants to try it, cause I know there's people that, you know, they get into these, it's so weird. Like this whole camp thing where you're like, you're part of the non keto camp or you're part of the keto <laughs> camp. Like, you know, you like have to identify, bro. yeah, yeah. You gotta, you gotta find your tribe. It's like, how hard do they try to, to make us into these tribes, dude? Like, it's so crazy. But, you know, some people maybe have, have, have shied away from it and they were genuinely curious, genuinely curious. But, you know, their, their figurehead that they love told them not to do it because it's stupid and blah, blah, blah. Right. So for you guys, <laughs> if you want to try it, here's, here's something that I was thinking. Keto for meatheads. You know, so if you're, you're a meathead, you're a bodybuilder type. Um, you know, 14 days, that first 14 days, really helping yourself get into like ketosis. So, you know, zero to very low carbs, eating, you know, meat and, you know, a little bit of veg here and there, and then have on that 14th day, a carb feast followed by the next day, a big high volume lifting day. Um, cause one of the things that people are going to notice is like, this is something that you just can't get around. Um, when you switch from one fuel source to another, there's always going to be a lag time between what type of energy your body's going to be able to use. So like you find that you cut your carbs completely, you are, you know, you're peeing out all your electrolytes, you're going through that, you know, ketosis for the first time and you can't take, maybe you can take ketones, but they're, they're not really going to help in my opinion with like intense stuff. Um, you're not going to be able to take like drinks that have fat in them and believe that you're going to be able to use that fat because you're not there yet. So one thing that I really, really believe in for several reasons, um, the, you can super starch dude, that stuff. Um, I will tell you, number one, it is the cutting edge when it comes to like carb supplements. So it's right. gonna, it's the most complex carb ever created. If you look right. at it, it's freaking huge and there's no insulin response. There's no blood sugar response, but at the same time, you're getting that glycogen. So someone like that, I would say those 22 carbs that are in there, don't even freaking put them in your daily total because nothing's right. going to happen. It's not going to impact your, your ketosis, but insulin you're going to have absorbed. Yeah. yeah. Insulin absorbed. And you're going to be able to use it. It's energy that you can use. So, you know, pre-workout super starch. Um, and then, um, cause dude, we even did last year, we did a, we did a little study and Dr. Volick wrote a freaking white paper on it. Like I got like five or six of my, you know, keto influencer friends who've been all keto for like two years or more. We did, you know, pre-workout, uh, you know, blood sugar, ketones, post-workout, you know, after taking it, it was, it was nothing. It was very, very little. There was no change. Um, and so if you're doing it for the first time, 14 days without, um, with, without carbs, and then you could do another seven days and you keep, keep doing that process to really start getting the benefits of being more metabolically flexible, you know, cause if you've been eating this clean, which is, it's a lot of the time it is, it's clean, you know, higher carb, but it's clean foods. You know, you, you still, unless you're doing endurance activity, you still got a lot of potential for fat adaptation. And that's going to be something that you want, you know, um, did you, do you want to add anything? No, there? Yeah, I mean, you said so much, I'll just add a little bit. Um, so I I'm, I'm in total agreement. Um, any type of specific diet don't become a member of the cult. 
metabolic flexibility, as you and I have learned, is always the key. Always fuel your energetic demand based on your lifestyle, based on your genetics, based on your muscle fiber typing. I mean, those are important things. And again, dude, as you know, we've we've created a society 20 years ago where you and I were really cutting our teeth in this. People were more intuitive. Yeah. People actually had to fucking do the work. Now these kids today, they read the internet. They go on forums. They read Ben Pakulski, Jay Campbell, Danny Vega, you know, uh, what's his name? Lane Norton. They read all these people and they're like, oh, well, I'm going to change everything because that's what they said. It has yep. what we do is for us. And yeah. what we do, we figured out, you know, you said something very important on this podcast for people to understand. You're like, I'm type two muscle fiber typing. Type 2B, yeah. I'm aerobic glycolytic. I'm a short twitch explosive dude. And, you know, obviously you see somebody like you, you're hyper muscular and that's who you are. I'm more of a combination of you and the long, you know, endurance. Type guy. 2A, type 1B, type Exactly, whatever. right? So, but that's the thing is 20 years ago, all of us figured it out. Because we put in 20 fucking years of yeah, it's good to know, but you gotta head. put it in. Yeah, you gotta know, you gotta know, you gotta feel it, you gotta have the Dude, experience so of it. So many of these people today, and again, it's not even their fault. They go online and they read these forums or these news groups, and I can mention all these different names of people. You know, it's the same thing on Instagram, and they, you know, they listen to them because they are gurus, but Again, who gives a shit what the guru says if it's not going to apply to you? And yeah, you you're can't not gonna know. It. Yeah, you're not going to know until you experiment on yourself. So all those things, you know, to add to what you said about, you know, taking these super, you know, high absorbable carbohydrate supplements, um, you know, these uh, cyclic dexatrin products, they're amazing. Anyone who is doing keto, long-term fasting, uh, you know, uh, carnivore, any of those type of diets, you have to use those supplements. I mean, they're such an advantage. I mean, again, 10, 15 years ago, we didn't have anything like that. But those things are like absolutely amazing. I mean, dude, you know, the other thing too is like, as you know, this, there's some of these new ketone ester products. Oh, which yeah. If you're going to do, you know, again, a 20 hour fast, which, you know, that's my lifestyle every other day, right? Today is an eating day, right? Still I mean, doing already, like Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Yeah, you yeah. Eat and, and here's my lift. oatmeal. Yeah, I, I was eating my oatmeal on the call, so I didn't have to say, say anything, right? On, the, on my previous <laughs> call. But like, I mean, literally you have to figure out what works for yourself. But if I'm fasting now, dude, like, and I want to go like a 36 hour fast, like I take, you know, one of those limeade, you know, ketone ester uh, mixtures and throw it in a water at about 20 hours. And I feel like I just had 250 grams of carbs. Yeah. So dude, and it, like, the brain benefits too, are just like lit, lit up. Yeah. So, yeah. So, I mean, like, look, let's take advantage of technology relative to again your individual inter-individuality right like your 100%. biochemical uniqueness but you're not going to learn your biochemical uniqueness until you experiment and work on yourself yes. you, listen to what danny and i say but take it with a grain of salt you got to figure shit out you know we're giving you some basic axioms but at the end of the day you still have to figure out yourself and like you said and i think this is really good before we shift into the next point if you're a fucking 135 to 145 pound guy who's 24 and you're 5'11 or 5'10, 11 or 5 10, you don't want to fucking fast or keto. You want to eat six times a day, a thousand calories every time you eat. You should be eating pe peanut butter and banana milkshakes with protein <laughs> powder thrown in them and slamming as many as you can that's what i was doing in high school man of that's, course i put training. in that there was no instagram though there was no instagram yeah, so exactly dude because i could put up those pictures but i'm gonna look so weird right. and i don't care but like people don't have those phases no, anymore. they don't have it dude you're right right Brutal. because because the false reality yeah. that they see putting in front of them would embarrass them. They'd be like, well, I'm bloated or I'm, you know, I got carb face or whatever it is. And so like, they can't yeah. even relate to do it. So instead their mind says, there's gotta be a hack, Danny. Yeah. There's gotta be a way that I can fast and go from 125 to 150. I mean, it's like, <laughs> dude, are you fucking kidding me? Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but it's so anyway, it's perfect. Let's get on the next one. So the next one is yeah. this is ble bleeding edge. I'm building muscle and losing fat. Now I'll go yeah. first just real quick. So yeah, 
hormone optimization and peptides. Now, obviously, these are two specialties of mine. If you're 30 years old and you absolutely feel like shit, you have no energy, you have too much belly fat, you must get your blood work done. You don't need to go to a doctor. You can go to direct labs, private MD labs, anything online, order a total and free testosterone test. And I would also order a sensitive estradiol, LCMS. It's 50 bucks. You can actually get them. That's the female, female steroid hormone panel, right? Exactly. I mean, you literally can do this for 30 to 35 bucks when they have coupons. You can even Google coupon private MD labs, whatever. You know, I use, I have affiliates for let's get checked. Who cares? Find out what you're doing, where you're at. And if you have a deficiency, then either you have one of two options. You can obviously massively optimize your lifestyle, which is what I recommend first, you know, through natural interventions, again, through all the things we've already talked about. The first step as a guy is always to reduce body fat. Okay. I don't give a shit. If you drop body fat, you're going to lower inflammatory factors. Exactly. You're going to get rid of inflammasomes. Now, obviously I'm pro testosterone. I'm pro, you know, hormone optimization. If you can find a doctor who can write you a script and can do this right, you know, go down that path right now. Peptides is a whole different ball game. Peptides should not even be looked at by anybody other than like hardcore performance athletes or bodybuilders. Um, you know, and then when you're getting into anti-aging, right? So like for me, if you're a 25 year old kid, you should not be fucking using IPA morelin. Okay. <laughs> yeah. you, you know, I mean, you, you, IGF it, should be high. should be real high. That's what I mean. I mean, so it's like, look if, again, the, you know, but pro bodybuilders and performance athletes are different. The skews differently, but if you're an average person trying to get, you know, in better shape and you're listening to Danny and, or you follow Jay and Danny, you don't need IPA morelin at 25. Okay. Save that for when you're later in your life and your natural growth hormone, as you said, your IGF one levels are lower. That's when you look into peptides. Now from an injury standpoint, if you're hurt, peptides are fucking magic. Okay. Blow blow a ligament, blow a knee, tear an ankle, blow a shoulder. You know, you can use the, you know, the, the tried and true or BPC 157, thymus and beta 500, 400. There's other stuff now, thymus and alpha. You know, there's some other things you can inject right into the muscle belly or to the origin of the injury, but, you know, save your peptides for injuries and immunity enhancement. You know, guys will say, but Jay, what about all the nootropic peptides? And I'm like, okay, nootropic peptides are cool. Yeah. But totally again, agree. in truth, do all these other lifestyle adjuvants first, you know, save a nootropic peptide for when you're 45, 50, 55, and you're starting to have a decline in cognition anyway. I mean, obviously optimize your hormones first, look at peptides second, but you know, that's what I would say about those things. Um, you know, building muscle and losing fat, there's a million different ways to train. You said it already. Most important thing is to understand your unique biochemical individuality and your muscle fiber typing. And relative to those two things, design a training program around that. I know this, you know, this, 95% of guys who are bodybuilders slash strength athletes are fucking under cardio. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yes. Bro, they have all sorts of blood pressure issues, this, that, and the other. They're always messaging me. I I barely even respond at this point. It's usually just a delete because I'm like, look, dude, I've read about, I've written about this a thousand times. I've done 10 podcasts, blah, blah, blah. Lower your body fat, improve your VO2 max, improve your cardiovascular efficiency, and all of those problems will literally go away. I mean, dude, think about how many guys are on vasopressin or they take, (laughs) you know, telemarks. It's crazy, man. All these fucking drugs to reduce their blood pressure. In their 20s and 30s. Bro, reduce your body fat. Start doing cardio. Stop reading forums that say bodybuilders don't do cardio. That's retarded. Talk to Ben Pakulski. Talk to Dorian Yates. These guys, you don't get to where those guys are unless you're doing cardio almost fucking every day of your life. If they yeah. don't, their heart will explode. Yep. Dude, people are so missing for, misinformed on cardio, but that's all I have. Again, there should be a combination of understanding your genetics, understanding your muscle fiber typing. And then as you age, especially if you're using therapeutic testosterone, which a lot of guys are doing nowadays, because you have to, because we're being a, a slaughtered environmentally, just make sure you're angles. adding cardio in. You have to improve yeah. uh, nutrient uh, degradation and pathway expul- expulsion. You have to get rid of the 
oxygen. Get things metabolized. Cells. Yeah. Dude, all these guys that have thick blood who are too fat, too inflamed, taking testosterone, if they would just lower body fat and do more cardio, they wouldn't have to do phlebotomies. They wouldn't have high blood pressure. But again, yep. they're too fat. Yeah, man. 25% body fat taking therapeutic testosterone is asking for a heart attack. And that's 25%, dude. A lot of people are higher. I know, dude. I mean, I'm, I'm literally being nice. I mean, I always say, if you want to live the longest, you have to be below 15% as a man and 20 for a woman. And obviously the difference is the maternal, you know, fat that women have for childbearing. Yep. But if you don't do those two things, again, under 15 for men, under 20 for women, you will not live as long as people that are in those things. So that's, that's yeah. pretty much what I got for that. Well, dude, I, I wrote some things down because like when you were talking about the importance of like getting these big bucket items addressed and not majoring in the minors, like so many people do because it's fun and it's a little bit easier too, because it's like, it's easier to take a supplement or to do something than to completely redo your whole routine and the way you live your life. And I get that. And the, and the, the hacks and the biohacks are all great, but like, I'm going to give you a plug, dude. I wrote this down because I like Azir custom, right? I get asked about it all the time. My hair is growing back. And, you know, I actually love the fact that you have to be on point for that to right. work. Exactly. You know, like you cannot have inflammation. You can't throw that into your toxic soup of everything that you're already doing with the supplements on top of your terrible toxic lifestyle. It's not going to work. You just so, tell them the truth, Danny. You say, look, if you're a fat motherfucker, don't buy this product. Get your life in order. Get your, yeah, you get your inflammation down. And so I, why did I bring that up, dude? It's because the people who get the most out of these little hacks are the ones that are, that are already healthy. Exactly. Dude. And that's like, that's what people don't understand. Like you don't use that as the crutch to get there. You use right. that when you're there and you're like, all right, now what's next? What's the next level that I'm going to go to? Um, so that was on that. Now the cardio dude across the board, <laughs> like pick your population, pick your, your diet, pick your disease, anything across the board, normalized for every population, brain and heart benefits for cardio. Absolutely. When Ben lived here, we would just do, you know, six mile walks at a freaking, you know, 13, 14 minute pace. Like, <laughs> but bro, know, and, what is better than walking? I tell people this oh, all I the do time. It every day, like, man. Hey, what's your preferred form of cardio? And I say, walking. fucking walking. You can walking. do anything. You can read a book. You can have a phone call. You can do anything. Dude, I've call done so mom, many consults. Yes. <laughs> Catching up on calls, uh, setting up posts, like scheduling posts. It's dude, unbelievable, so much. Dude. And you're doing it outside. So like, yes. I get it. We got work to do. That's what we do, right? We're always marketing. We're always promoting. We're always doing a million different things. Right. Get the, you know what caused get me to do moving. that, Jay? Yeah. I, you know, remember I came, I had spent 10 years, you know, in scrubs, walking up down the right. hospital right. and walking all day. I, all of a sudden I get home, I quit my job. I start my business. I'm getting back pains. You know, I'm like, holy shit, I'm sitting all day. Look at me, the health guy sitting all day. So I found this recording software because like if I'm doing a consult and I'm asking the questions, this thing is recording it for me. So I don't have to be sitting down here writing in my notebook. Exactly. And that changed things because now I could be outside two or three times a day. And like if you're in a, in, in a desk situation, fine. Set a freaking alarm for every 90 minutes. Bro, to get I haven't up and sat, walk by the way, just so you know, FYI, I, I haven't sat in a chair in five years. This is a standing desk. Oh, I man. Will I, never, mine ever is standing. Sit down. I will never, ever sit down ever again because I'm just like you. I mean, the more you sit yes. down, especially athletic people, yeah. the more we start getting injured because that fixed chain lock of our musculatures and our ligaments and tendons is horrific. And I got tight hip flexors as it is. Of so course. I always got to work on that. And, you know, if you're sitting all day and you're, I, dude, I went through this Jay at the beginning, like before I started doing all this extra walking, I would go like basically a, not a pull, but kind of like a strained right QL. Sure. Or get the massage therapist to work on it. Strained left QL. And all of that was from it's this. Quadratus laborum for you guys. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Quadratus laborum. Yeah. 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 People are not <laughs> So That's yeah, awesome. man. And so it was like back and forth with that. And it's like, it's because of the, it's because of me sitting down, it's toxic. So, um, I do want to bring it back. So for the hard gainers, these people that we're talking about here is a very simple thing that you can do. Um, right off the bat, I would say you want to try keto. First of all, start with 
multiply your goal body weight times 20 for your there starting you calories, Perfect. right? That's so exactly what I use, by the way. All right, there you go. So like, so let's say you want to get to 170, you'll start at 3,400, right? Right. Uh, you start there. It doesn't mean that you're, because if you, you're good, you might have to go up more, but that's a starting point. Right. Right. Um, set your protein to your desired body weight. So if you want to get up to 170, 170. And then on the lifting days, this is crucial for a hard this. gainer, especially 20 carbs before, 40 carbs post. Very simple. Yeah. So that means I like, would add, you- dude, this is amazing. I would add, fuck, eat 50, 40, 30 to 50 carbs during your workout. Carry that oh, motherfucker yeah, 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 yeah. while you're training and, and do it while yes, you're so you're adding that too. But dude, you're totally right. Do you realize, you're going to laugh at this, 3,400 calories. Most people can't even eat that in two days. And they're like, oh, I'm a hard gainer. It's because you don't fucking eat enough food. Yeah, it's always that. It's like, I'm eating so much and I'm still not gaining. I'm like, dude, you're, you're like, not what are you eating, eating enough. Dude? Right. You're not eating you enough. Eating? You're just not well, eating enough. Well, it's because they, they don't have, again, this is all from you, when you and I were growing up, we ate more natural foods. Yep. So our body was able to digest them because it worked to digest them. The shit food that these guys are eating today, the body doesn't even work to digest it because it doesn't fucking digest it. So nah, they dude. think they're eating more than they are, but they're just piling in toxins, dude. And they're not. So like, it's so funny because like, this is the most ironic thing ever. Remember the seventies, we had fight hunger and it was exactly. such a big deal. Like we had hunger and we literally switched with uh, whoever it was, if it was Johnson or if it was, no, it might've been, um, it might've been during Nixon years. I don't know, but we started to do this whole, um, I forget what the campaign was, but it literally in three years of that campaign, we started to see the, ob- the obesity epidemic. Right. And so right. how weird is it, Jay, that we are the richest, one of the richest countries in the world. And we literally have people eating like two to 3000 calories of garbage and McDonald's. they're underfed McDonald's. Cause they're not, their body's not assimilating any of it. And how is it that you're getting all fat, you're getting obese, you're getting every symptom you could think of. And yet at the very least, if it was good food, you'd have, you know, your, your, the ways that we feel satiety, you know, the, the ther- it's like right. a, a thermostat, you know, exactly. when your body sees that you have a certain amount of amino acids, it's like, okay, that's one way you feel full. Then you get the mechanical stretch of the stomach. Then you get, you know, ghrelin and leptin. And these people, their bodies are keep telling them, "Eh, try again. And it's like they keep eating and there's nothing. Their body's like, still haven't hit it, buddy. Keep going. You know, and it's this endless thing and they're underfed. So, yeah, so that that, uh, carbs on off days for someone like that, 50 grams. And then on the lifting days, maybe you're 100. But here's the deal. Like, understand that keto was created therapeutically at first, you know, epileptics, these people were eating 90% fat, you know, 5% protein and maybe 5% carbs, you know, right. and amazing benefits for that and all that. But here's the deal, you know, th- these things, um, w- when you start dealing with people who are training hard, they go out the window, you exactly. know, like even totally. when I was eating 300 carbs, dude, totally, I was freaking yeah. In ketosis the next day. Exactly. Same as me, dude. I, dude, I could eat 600 grams of carbs in a six <laughs> hour window and 17, I mean, obviously I was geeking out, you know, testing, tracing all that, but 17 hours later be deep purple in 17 deep. hours. If you're 600 grams of carbs, because again, your body, as you said, becomes fat and fast adapted. Your ketotic enzymes, you know, start coming on. Your glucagen overwhelms your insulin. And before you know it, you're deep in ketosis. But so, yeah, dude, it's all true. And that is, you know, that you, you kind of switched topics, which is really good because that in and of itself means you need more food. That oh, yeah. in and of itself means you need to eat more calories. And again, so and women, really is, women suffer from that a ton, dude. They don't eat enough. Oh, dude. Uh, what woman do you know that's not married to Jay Campbell or Danny Vega who's not protein <laughs> malnourished? They're all almost do, all they're protein all, malnourished. Bro. Yeah. They really, really are. Women are literally so afraid of overeating that they don't eat the things that they have to eat, which is the amino acids to function. And it's insane how fast all of them, not all of them, but many of them get bone mineral density issues. How crazy like is you that? Said, you know, and they're eating, and remember, like, it's just not, it's not ancestrally appropriate. I mean, some people, like we always say, some people see the results at first because they're cleaning up their diet. Good for you. Now add some meat to that and look at what you got. You are golden. 
it's it's crazy, bro. It's become this gigantic movement. And I don't want to rabbit hole too much on it. You know, like I said, and I know you're the same because I've listened to you talk about this, but if you want to do it for spiritual purposes, be our guest. It's awesome. Yeah. Good for you. Yes. Totally support that. But do it right. And 99% yeah, of people do it wrong because they go and buy Impossible Burger or Wonder <laughs> Burger or whatever these insane, yeah. you know, movements of Oreos. selling processed poisons they even they even brainwash the people at starbucks you know when you say you know like you have you know i remember one time i went when i was in saint simon's in july and i went i was like do you guys have egg whites and they're like no but we have you know whatever and i'm like what is that and they're like oh it's a sustainable plant-based blah 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 i'm like what i mean i told the guy i'm like bro you need to recognize that you're being brainwashed because there's nothing sustainable about that crap. That's poison <laughs> that literally are toxifying your body. He was just like speechless. Okay, sir. Well, um, I'll take that under consideration. But I mean, it's like <laughs> we, you know, we brainwashed young people that that is a food stuff that is healthy for them. And then you and I both know it's not. It's laced with phytoestrogens. It's laced with contaminants. It's laced with again seed oils, processed non-biologic. Uh, seeds. I mean, and, and whatever else that goes straight up it. sorcery, it's dude. Poison. To me, it's it's pure sorcery. Like, don't get me started. It it literally is to me. It's it's the it's the same sorcery being used with the pharma. You know, people think it's like sorcery. this is not science, guys. This is straight up like black magic. And you guys are like, how crazy literally. is it that the whole Overton window thing, right? We we are at the maximum effects of the Overton window where it started off. Oh, you know, we found out that we could put this soy in dog food and they won't die. And now we're here where people are actively asking for it. Give me the soy burger. Give it's me the process. It's incredible, bro. It's crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> I mean, we've engineered people. It, 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 it's, I mean, well, one more point to just a rabbit hole. We have plenty of time um, on that, you know, and you know this because you and I were talking about this and a lot of our friends were talking about this, but when Texas had that cold snap, remember, at the early part oh, of the yeah. year. And <laughs> for days, people in like Austin and other, you know, Cosmo places had no power. And there were these stories of these millennials and these Gen Zs who literally went without food for three days. And I'm like, how can you go without food for three days? And then you read the stories. And Danny, these people literally exist by going to fast food restaurants. They don't even have food in their fucking house or pantry. Who lives like that? Well, young people today do because they're literally engineered by this. Yeah. Isn't it's gonna that be insane? really hard for someone like that? You know, someone like that, I mean, is is uh at such a disadvantage uh in so many areas of life. You know, like imagine you or me being in a conversation with them at a party. And getting into something deep, like it's going to be, it's going to go way over because it's going to be, there's no way. What are you talking about? Right. Forget about right. like, forget about oh, the current All stuff. the same people, bro, that have, you know, three injections up and down their arms and are waiting for the next booster. Yeah, man. It's, uh, it's I mean, sad, it's, it, it, it's mind blowing, but I mean, like Mo Mo Monica, Monica didn't believe it. And I sent her an article, Monica being my wife, for you guys that don't know, but I sent her an article that was, you know, this man, th there was a guy in uh, North Texas who runs this big men's group and it's all for young people. It's all under 30. And they were all sharing their stories. And I, I was like, look at this, but dude, we'll drop this. But people like you and I come from a world where like, we have canned goods. Yeah. We yeah, have a rainy day plan. We have protein powder. We have, you know, beans, Survival and books, rice, and whatever the fuck edible. it is. Like, yeah. I mean, I mean, to not have anything like that in your house is such a scary thought for me because again, it's the FOMO mentality of young people. They they literally don't have a plan. When you yeah. say live your life with purpose, there ain't no purpose, bro. They oh, have been engineered to not have purpose. Yeah, it's the purpose is the current ob uh, objective, the current agenda. And here's the thing, like Mike Mutzel asked me back in the day, like, cause we were talking about like becoming a better person and, you know, you know, working on yourself. And he's like, can you do that before you fix the diet? And I said, no, no, you can't you, no, you, you cause can't. if your brain is not even working right, you got to exactly. fix your diet, fix the exactly. diet, you know, like you're not going to be able to exactly. achieve these higher states of like performance and consciousness and anything. If you 
continue to be this toxic factory of just this metabolism of just nonsense going on. Like you're building your cell walls with seed oils. You're doing all these things. It's, it's not human. And that's, we're already transhuman. Forget about the things that are going right. on because, you know, right. forget about the genetic modification that people are stand, you know, signing up for. It's already happened with just the, what we're doing to ourselves. Like, look, Anthony has talked about this for years. The, yep. the freaking, the, the epigenetic marks that become permanent, you know, because of the plastics and the, all that. So, I mean, look, it's all, we get hyped up because not enough people are focusing on these big items of getting this metabolic flexibility um, and, and just understanding your lifestyle choices and your diet choices in the context of you as an individual, your goals, you know, the time of year, the season, all of those things are our responsibility. And let's yeah. stop giving it away to somebody else that, you know what I tell people, Jay, because I tell people this all the time because the, the thing with the kids comes up. We talk about the kids all the time and how we eat with them and all that. And it's like, I don't care if they are going at 18 years old, they leave my house and they go straight to the hot and ready sign and get themselves some donuts. Bro, go it's for the it. same thing. We have the same yeah. family statements. When you're 18, go for it. do whatever you want. Yeah. But you know what they're going to know, Jay? Because of what we, what we put in, they're going to know that the first approach is what can I fix in my diet? What can I fix in my lifestyle? It's not going to be, I got to go to the doctor. Not going to be bro, that. Bro, That's I have the last resort. Great, dude, I have such a great statement for you. This. I told my daughter I wanted her to record this so I could put it in our group. So yesterday, oh, I dropped her off at homeschool. Check this out. Now, she's in homeschool, but oh. they get two days a week for the eighth grader to be with other other kids for three hours, right? And you know, I'm in California, so I got to deal with the demonic source craft, sorcery, but drop her off. So they Good. go in there. And there's like nine kids in her class that are going to, you know, locally close enough that they can go. So you get in there and, and, and my daughter tells me yesterday, she's like, one of the lady teachers in there was like, why are you not wearing a mask? Why are you not wearing a mask? You, all of you kids are selfish. You don't care about anybody else. And my daughter literally said like that. She says, what are you raising your hand for? I said, can I speak? And she said, my body, my choice. I'm not wearing a mask Ooh. and you should not worry about whether I'm wearing a mask either. I'm wow. immune and healthy. She literally said that. Now I had some other kids in Love the class that. who I um, talked to don't, don't drive home. We, we might get to that, but like, they were like, Oh, your daughter is so cool. And then they all told me that. And so I was like, so excited. I, I was like, I want you to record that, you know, to say that yes. to people. So dude, you're right. Our kids are learning through example by the examples that we provide them, the way we lead our lives with purpose and a mission. And it's like so cool that, you know, my 13 year old daughter stood up to that sheep, that fearful, you know, tyranny full, purposeless human, which as you yeah. know, is the majority. That's yeah, the majority. Man. I mean, who's going to say that to a 13 year old child? other than a person who's riddled with fear. That woman was riddled with fear to say that to those kids. She even knows fear that and they ego. don't have to wear a mask. Well, I guess ego is fear anyways, because like, oh, you know, because it's also the feeling, that good feeling of being so much better, you know, that it's feeling of man, 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 wagging the finger and all that. Um, and, and you're, I mean, bring up another good point. It's like these kids eat healthy. They, they get homeschooled. They, they're immune to all of this stuff. They're they just like it. looking at this world, like scratching their head, like what the heck is going on? And I mean, it's, that's a beautiful thing. Like your daughter would have been denied that opportunity to step up and be this fierce Absolutely. woman that she's, be, you know, become if it wasn't for these times. And, and that's my comfort knowing what they're going through right now, because Maura was the first one to brought it up. Like they were obviously chosen for this time. Yes. And they can handle it. And I'm like, they yeah, volunteer, that's... right, bro. They volunteer. Yeah, like the, 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 the people that World War II, the same thing. Look at what yep. happened in the 50s, the best freaking decade of our lot of our existence in the United States, yep. you know? Yep. And so that's that these cycles come back, you know. This is not an end storyline where where it's all over and then it's there's a cycle coming, it's coming back, and and you know, having more people awaken to that is a beautiful thing. But you got to get your diet. You got to get your diet in order. Okay, so, or you're not so I want to talk about future projects. Your your kids oh, yeah. book stuff for me yes. and you. I we had one more point. I'm going to slide over it. Just you can make a quick statement. I make a quick statement. It's like what supplements sure. are necessary. Oh, yeah. 
yep. in today's day and age to be impervious to COVID. Now I have a link that I'll be posting in the bottom of this podcast from it's on Instagram and also Twitter of all the supplements that really you know, Nick Andrews and I helped Cliff High and other people to you know put together to send out as like an anti COVID you know impervious immunity uh, stack. Now obviously again you know do your research know what works for you. You know, if you can't afford some of these things, it's not that important, you know, just look at the bigger, you know, the big meat and potatoes parts and take them again. I'll link to them, but for you right now, like what are in the bioweapon day and age or whatever the hell this is, like, what, what do you think are must haves every day? Yeah. So morning I'll do my, my vitamin D3 with K2. Um, I'll do my liver capsules. Uh, I'll do my calm and clear. It's our friend, Allie Miller's it's like B vitamins and yep, adaptogens. Have to have it. Uh, when I'm really, really, um, hitting it hard until I can get a machine, I'm, ha- I'm taking molecular hydrogen tablets, which nice. have been really helpful, but I, I do want to get the machine, um, nano minerals. So the minerals that I've been taking for the last year and a half are all like liquid nano minerals, my buddy Barton. So nano magnesium, nano potassium. Um, also I take two of his other products, which one of them is peak thyroid, which is basically, uh, selenium and yep. iodine. And then the other one is peak or, or it's called, um, upgraded memory and it's got boron and a few other things. Nice. Um, other than that, like when I drink my coffee, I'll have my keto brains, which is, okay. uh, it's a creamer. It's MCT powder, L-theanine, lion's mane and alpha GPC, which is like Beautiful. daily almost for me. I think and then when I'm. Myself. Dude, those, those are the best. Um, and then like, if I'm really training hard, I'll do CBD five milligrams per kilogram. So about 500 for me. Um, other than that, like at night I'll take, um, you know, ashwagandha most nights I I overdose on it. Yep. Dude, I feel like a tingly feeling when I, when I, cause there's I'll take actually, like, there's an aphrodisiac feeling from that sometimes too. Some ooh. people can experience like an aphrodisiac feeling with cortisol, but from a suppression of cortisol standpoint, like if you've had a stressful day, like the day that you and I live now, almost every day of our life, <laughs> yeah. like yep. taking four to six grams of ashwagandha, a good quality supplement before you go to bed, 30 minutes is insane for sleep. It's insane. so good. You'll get a HRV bump. I'll do the Santa Cruz deep sleep caps too. That's like a little bit more l some valerian and CBD. Sometimes I'll do Fenibit if I'm like really wanting to just hit myself with some, you know, real GABA, you know, uh, boost. Um, yeah. And sometimes during the day I'll do aniracetam mixed with Fenibit, which is like awesome. That's, that's it yeah. for me, bro. That's beautiful, man. I don't do any of the race tams. I think it's great. Um, I do. I will. I haven't in a long time, but I will use modafinil at, 25 to 40 milligrams which guys were like how the fuck do you do that i'm one of those dorks that actually has the old school pill splitter i can actually put it in the pill thing and i can actually crush it and measure it exactly as i want but i mean um i only use modafinil when i'm writing and i haven't been writing as you know in a while hopefully me and you are going to start soon but I mean, books, yeah. books are a whole nother thing now it's mostly courses you write the book as a business card and then you put the course out but uh the only other thing I would add to everything you said is melatonin is very underrated. And here's yeah. the problem with melatonin. Most melatonin sold over, over the counter is worthless. Uh, you have to get a high quality uh, form of melatonin. There's actually uh, a powder form of melatonin that you can get. There's also like a nasal mist. Uh, again, this is almost script based, but melatonin, there's a guy out there by the name of Russell Briggs. He's the melatonin world, the best researcher in the world on melatonin. He's so old and he's not in the best of health, but he doesn't exercise. He's very open about that. But dude, he takes 150 milligrams of melatonin before he goes to bed every night. Now he has developed a test that can basically determine how much you can take relative to your body weight and also how you feel. And the judgment of melatonin is always, if you wake up feeling groggy, you took too much, right? Now, here's the thing gotcha. about melatonin that everyone screws up. Most people take melatonin before they go to bed. <clears throat> Wrong answer. You have to take melatonin at least Early, 90 right? minutes before you sleep yeah. because you have to allow it to cross the blood brain barrier. In fact, if you take melatonin right before you go to sleep, if you're like me and you and you're very type A, it'll fucking stimulate you. you, you you'll want to go back to work. You'll be like, shit, my brain is, I'm firing. So melatonin right now is one of the strongest adjuvants at preventing the invasion of your blood cells from whatever. That's this a, it's an antioxidant is. too, right? 
Well, so what it does is, is it increases the heme count in your red blood cells and COVID theoretically scavenges the heme. So if you get infected with COVID, you are literally having an oxygen deprivation. That's why all these people can't breathe. And then the morons in allopathic medicine intubate them and then they're dead. Yep, but in reality, me. when your heme or your red blood cells are starving for oxygen, it's due to that quote unquote virus. So if you're regularly consuming melatonin, it can't happen because your melatonin is literally keeping the cells oxygen, uh, uh, not depleted, but uh, full or oxygen repleted. So even if you get COVID, you're going to be fine. I mean, like the world's leading researcher on COVID, her name is Doris La, um, excuse me, on vitamin C and melatonin to fight COVID. Uh, says that you should take anywhere from 0.05 to 0.75 milligrams per pound of body weight when you start experiencing symptoms of COVID. And you can take it all day and you will literally be gone. COVID will be out of your body within 24 hours. Now that's like her latest shit. I still read her stuff. Wow. But again, dude, all of this stuff is suppressed because it's not a drug. It's not. Dude, I, I put the vitamin C thing out. We talked about it last year. Yeah. Both of us did. <laughs> we were talking about the vitamin C. Dude, how, how much did people hate us? Dude, all, are like, those you articles, are full. all of those articles are still blocked on, on my site. People email oh, me all the time and say, I went on your site and I'm trying to read it. And it's just a white page. And I go, yeah, to thank Google. Okay. So let's, let's switch topics. Let's get into the end of this. Cause I got about 12 minutes. Good so deal. future projects. So I'll name everything. You and I are going to write a fat loss book together. We may get to that. Uh, my courses on hormones and peptides are coming uh, you are going to be involved in that. You just don't know that yet. I'm going to be letting you know pretty I'm soon. In. Um, but I want, I want to talk about your children's books. Cause I think this is fascinating. My mom at one time in her life was writing children's books and giving them out to like all of our friends and family. That's and everybody great. was like, Oh my God, Martha, you got to publish this. But this is 25 years ago before Amazon, before yeah. on-demand printing and all that stuff. So she just never got around to doing it. But I was always fascinated by children's books and how much you could help people. And what better time than now with all this fucking brainwash, you oh know, the disinformation, the liberalization, um, what do you call it? The critical race theory, all this garbage that they're filling our children's minds with. What could be better than you putting out something that's actual real and authentic and transparent for our kids? So talk about it. Dude, it started, first of all, I'll just say a quick story how it started. So my buddy, Adrian, he does marketing, um, and he is like, he, he calls me up. He starts calling me and asking me for advice on this kid's book he's writing. And he, he calls me a few times and I'm all excited for him. You know, he asked me for advice. And then like, I guess the second or third time, he's like, you know, cause I'm giving him all this information. He's like, wait a second. Why don't you just write this with me? So that's what started it. And, and he's like, uh, he told me the concept. He's like, I want to take self, you know, personal development books that we love, write a list of them and turn them into kids books. And literally both of us at the same time said, we got to start with how to win friends and influence people. You know, that book for me, it's like one of the first books, even like when I was finishing college and I was like starting my career, it was so important for me to read. And there's a quote in the book early on. And, and it's something like, basically it doesn't matter what business you're in. If you're an engineer, if you're a doctor, if you're a, a you know politician, everybody has to learn how to deal with people everybody you know that you you will screw yourself if you don't know how to deal with people so um we started to get to work on it and and um this is the first book so we we basically take these books we turn them into storybooks the process dude you're you're gonna have to do this at some point or another because the creative writer writing process for something like this is so different than what the typical stuff that we do and you start to find yourself going back into your childhood, thinking of people that were mentors to you, giving them homage, turning them into characters. And, you know, all these, there's so many cool stories in the book. We even made a glossary of who's the inspiration for this character? Who's the inspiration for that character? Um, and it came out great, man. We're getting some great feedback from my buddies who, who are in the business and who are awesome. looking at it. But it's the first of many. So like if you know the Tuttle Twins, it's like the same concept, except the Tuttle Twins, what they do is it follows them around and then they'll take like G. Edward Griffin's like the creature from Jekyll <laughs> Island and they'll turn it into a kid's book or they'll, they'll take um, this awesome. other guy. 
Yeah, like even freaking um, The Law by Bastiat, they turned that into a book. So those are like philosophical, economics type books, awesome. Ours, we get to be a little bit more creative too because we can switch the characters. So the first, you know, the main character, this guy, Memphis Smith, he's the main character in this book. He goes away on the next book, you know? So it's just a great way to um, really just look back at the mentors in my life. And I can't wait to tell some of my friends who are in the book and who are, you know, influences for some of the characters. But that's pretty much it, man. I mean, it's it's going to be great. It's going to have a, a workbook for parents. So I, I put in crossword puzzles, you know, mazes, word searches, awesome, even bro. like historical figures. Like, what is this guy's historical significance who's from the book so bro they're deleting um, all those people our children don't even know oh anything gosh, about history or changing the whole story has been deleted out they don't know anything before 1990 they don't know anything about the vietnam war the korean war the world wars i mean like all of this stuff is so deleted from their memory banks because remember what churchill said and i'm sure he stole it from somebody else but you know you're deemed or doomed to repeat the mistakes of the past, if you never learn about them. They so always they tell us too. Doing. Isn't it funny how they always tell us and they're doing it? But it's like, Incredible. I told you, it's like, you know, deniability or not, not even it's, plausible. They, they, they know that they told you. you know, so it's universal law that they inform you before they manipulate you. Yeah. You have to. You cannot break someone's free will. 100%. Yeah, man. <laughs> so when are these things going to be out there? So like you, so I can help you promote them and stuff. Dude, so um, I'm literally, after we get off, I got a call with my lawyer um, to set everything up where we finally, hopefully, um, got an illustrator. We, we went through three or four different illustrators. It was really bad. Um, you know how that works with graphics people. Timelines are terrible. Uh, what they deliver on, it's a lot of the time they never give you what they promise. Everything so is slow finally, too right now due to COVID, dude. Everything is delayed. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. So I'm, I'm hoping by mid-October we'll have it out. Um, That's awesome. people can, can pre-order it for 99 cents already. Um, I'll give you the link for that. Please, um, yeah. I want to put it in the podcast. Yeah. So, so we'll do that. And, um, yeah, man, so mid October is probably when it's going to be out and, and thank God. Cause I got other stuff that I'm trying to work I on know, now. Right. Yeah. yeah. You got a million other things. That's awesome, man. Well, I'm really grateful that you're actually doing that. Okay. So then from you and me real quick update. So I hired literally the world's best course creation company. Cause dude, I just couldn't get over the hump of doing it myself and recording it, and uploading it and putting it in these, you know, various platforms. So I'm like, you know what? I told Nick, I'm like, we're not paying ourselves from our company. Our company is starting to blow up. We're going to literally pay for the courses out of the company. You go with that. He's like, dude, Brilliant. I'm good with that. So hormones and peptides, they are absolutely outstanding. They will be without question, the best courses on planet earth for the subjects, which again is hormone optimization, which as you know, is desperately needed. I mean, more, there'll be more doctors taking the course than, you know, patients probably because the doctors want to learn how to it. do this right. And then peptides, yep. as you know, I actually, we hired a guy um, who's like a uh, Google analyst uh, expert keyword searcher. And he found out, which is crazy. I did not know this, but he just sent this to me on Friday of last week. He's like, bro, he's like, right now you're the second most researched peptide person on planet earth, according to Google. Wow. And, you're even, and you're even blackballed and hidden, you know, a lot of people can't find your articles, right? Because they, again, allopathic medicine doesn't want peptides supplanting it. So it's crazy, but he's like, you have no idea like how big your peptides course is going to be because of your name. So he's like, we can do a lot with that, blah, blah, blah. But Amazing. anyway, long story short, when these courses are out, which might be the same time as your course, uh, your books being mid-October to early November, I want to sit down with them because I have now their template and we can build guaranteed shredded version two and it will be based on like everything that you and I know across the board on how to lose fat. And we'll give them a plan for everything. Hell, you want to be a carnivore? Fine. Do it this way. You want to use a ketosis diet, targeted, cyclical? Fine. Do it this way. You want to fast every other day? Fine. Do it this way. You don't give a shit about any of that and you want to literally <laughs> eat six times a day and still lose weight? Do it this way. So like in my mind, oh, good. we will it's literally- like choose your own adventure. Forward. Bro, we will literally create a course that says, it's up to you. Exactly. Create your own adventure. It's like a video game, but here's all the different ways that you can get, get leaner or get ripped. Choose your path and go. And we'll build that. that, dude. And between both of us, dude, I mean, again, 
six months ago and I told you, ah, I suck at building courses. I don't know what I'm doing, but now I watch these people build these two courses and I know exactly what to do now. And I well, also, dude, have my, my answer to you was yes back then. And it's still yes now. <laughs> I, mean, dude, it's gonna be amazing. I mean, I feel so much better. The other one that I'll end up doing is with Jason, the guy that wrote the book, your mind is a prison, you know, in our group. And we'll just do like a spirituality, uh, Ooh, you know, unhook your mind, you know, here's the key. Nice. And it won't be esoteric because, you know, we go over most people's heads when we talk esoteric, but you know, with the black magic stuff, but yeah. Um, he could just talk about your mind. But anyway, dude, um, you and I will be talking by the end of October. I mean, this will be something that we can put together right away. I mean, I, I can see yeah. us getting it done in a month. Literally. I totally agree, man. I got so much content. Remember, I still got the book that just got scrapped, my keto ketogenic athlete book. So I got a lot of good uh, foundational dude, stuff in there. That'll be yeah. absolutely unbelievable. Okay, let me post your links and again. Okay, so guys, obviously, Danny, I love you. I appreciate you guys. I mean, I appreciate you and Mara. I appreciate all the things that you're doing. So guys, please go to his website, Fat Fueled Family. Uh, follow him on Instagram. Again, he's one of literally only two people that I actually pay attention to on Instagram. Really, you're really the only one. The, the only <laughs> other one is uh, a seer because I have to. Uh, I love it, dude. I know. That's so awesome. Unexplainable Adventures, also go there too. Uh, follow Danny, listen to what he has to say, you know, buy his products. He affiliates for a lot of different people. Um, dude, I love and appreciate you, man. I'm so grateful we did these podcasts. They're both going to be phenomenal. Too, what man. I'm going to do what a is, fun ride. You, know, you don't know this, but I got an email from my podcast creation team yesterday. It says, hey, dude, your 300th episode is October 25th. Ooh. So what do you want to do? We can do all these things. I'm like, I know exactly what I'm going to do. It's going to be a two-part special episode with yes. Danny Vega. Dude, that is awesome. So, dude, Love so it. so you're going to be hearing a lot more from me. They're probably going to ask you to record some snippets and some reels, um, but we'll push this out all over the place. My podcast company will probably interview you and stuff like that, you know, because it's obviously this is, I think, 300. I think it's from 2015. I think I started amazing. this in 2015. So, yeah, it's amazing how fast time flies, but uh, – I will talk to you very soon, bro. I love you, man. And I appreciate you. Love you too, brother. Feeling is mutual, man. Okay, guys. So remember, raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. We'll see you guys very soon. Danny, I'll talk to you later.